Free Rodney Reed. Free Rodney Reed. Free Rodney Reed. Free Rodney Reed. The voices of Rodney Reed supporters have been rising over the past few months as an increasing number of lawmakers, celebrities, editorial writers, and people from around the world are hoping to save him from execution for crimes that they say he did not commit. Reed is scheduled to be executed in Texas on November 20th, that's less than a week away. Despite repeated attempts by his lawyers to get a stay of execution and a new trial for the man they say has been wrongly convicted. In our podcast series, Texas Crime Files, we've been hearing from both sides of the issue concerning Reed's guilt or innocence. From those who believe that Reed was the killer of 19-year-old Stacy Stites, and from those who believe that Stites' fiance murdered her. Now in episode three, we continue our story of what happened after investigators tied Reed to the death of Stites. The damning evidence, according to police, was the discovery of Reed's DNA inside Stites' body. Prosecutors say he raped and killed her. Defense attorneys support Reed's assertion. He says he didn't kill her, and that they were having an affair, and that his sperm was found in her body because they had had consensual sex days before she was found dead. Rodney Reed went on trial in 1998 in the small town of Bastrop, Texas. An all-white jury had been selected to try Reed, a black man, in that county's first capital murder trial in decades. Dave Harmon covered the trial for the Austin Statesman newspaper, where he worked as a reporter at the time. Harmon is now investigative and special projects editor for the Texas Tribune. This was a big murder case in a small town with a, a very big racial component. There were a lot of folks interested in this case, and the, the courthouse was full. The crowd was separated. The, uh, the African-American spectators tended to file up into the balcony every day and watch from up there. And the white spectators were in the lower area in the, in the benches. It, it was tense. You know, there was, there was a lot of tension in the room um, as the trial went on. You know, I felt like the defense did a good job with what they had. And what they had was a contention or a defense that the DNA came about because Rodney Reed and Stacey Stites were having a secret affair, uh, and an affair that neither one of them wanted anyone to know about because it, it would have meant it would have been an interracial relationship in, in a small town. While the defense played up the consensual relationship between Reed and Stites, the prosecution had a different framing. They argued that there had been no affair at all that Rodney Reed had made up the story. They emphasized the DNA evidence found inside Stacy Stites' body. The prosecution's case was so heavily dependent on the DNA evidence. Uh, They did not have fingerprints or hair or anything else really connecting Rodney Reed to the crime scene. Um, So DNA was, was their case. They characterized it as a random attack they didn't, I don't remember them having a motive. And their theory was that Rodney Reed kind of ambushed Stacy as she's driving her fiance's pickup truck to work from Giddings to Bastrop. So somewhere between Giddings and Bastrop, their theory was Rodney Reed got her out of the truck somehow uh, and, and killed her. Stacy Stites fiance, the police officer Jimmy Fennell, took the stand for the prosecution at the trial. Fennell was an early suspect in her killing and had failed two polygraph tests. Dave Harmon. He was upset that he had initially been considered a suspect, pretty much said, I didn't kill her. And he had been questioned by a Texas Ranger. Uh, and the ranger testified that he was extra tough on Jimmy because Jimmy was a police officer. But in the end, the ranger said he just didn't have anything to go on. Um, although the police did not, or the investigators did not search the apartment that, that Jimmy and Stacy shared. The thing that really surprised me was the, the discussion about the polygraph. Um, which the jury never heard. 
And people who are familiar with, with criminal justice know that judges routinely do not admit polygraph evidence because it's considered unreliable. But out of the jury's presence, um, it was revealed that Jimmy Finnell took a polygraph and he was asked if he strangled his fiance, and he failed. The judge ultimately said, I'm not going to let the jury hear that. But that, to me, was very surprising. Jimmy Finnell wept on the stand, uh, and that was a pretty you know, powerful moment because um, he was a big, tough Texas law officer um, and uh, you know, got up there and, and cried when talking about his, his fiance dying. Uh, and I was really waiting to see how the defense was going to advance its, its theory that there was a, a secret affair between Rodney Reed and Stacey Stites. Uh, so after the prosecution rested and it was the defense's turn, they called Iris Lindley, and she was a friend of the Reeds, and she said she was visiting the Reed family, and a young woman walked up and asked for Rodney, and Rodney wasn't home at the time. Um, and Lynn Lee testified that the woman asked her to tell Rodney that Stephanie came by. And at that point, the defense lawyer said, you know, what did you say her name was? And Lynn Lee said, Stephanie, Stacy, Stacy. So she got the name wrong. Um, and... The defense lawyer showed her a photograph, and she identified it as Stacy Stites. Um, but it really didn't, it wasn't very powerful testimony. You know, this was a pretty key defense witness, and the name was wrong. And really all she could testify to was that a woman came by asking for Rodney Reed that she believes was Stacy Stites. Um, which does not prove an affair. There was a lot of testimony about uh, a man named David Lohan who had pleaded guilty to murdering a woman from Elgin around the same time that Stacy Stites was killed. So Elgin near? Elgin is, yeah, it's, it's not far from, from Bastrop, um, both in Bastrop County. And... Uh, the, the woman from Elgin was, was murdered in 1996, right around the time of Stacey Stice. She was also strangled. Her body was also dumped in a rural area. So the, the defense pointed to him as a, as a potential suspect as well, and they actually produced a couple of witnesses who said that Lahan and Stites dated. Um, and one of them said that uh, she saw the two of them together at a, a festival in Smithville, and he introduced Stacy Stites as, quote-unquote, his girl. So the jury heard that, uh, and the defense tried to get him to take the stand and testify, and he refused to answer questions. You know, I remember thinking when the jury went out that Rodney Reed was most likely going to get convicted because... The, the DNA evidence was really hard to to explain away, and the defense theory they just weren't able to back it up with with witnesses. Um, so, um, my my hunch was that that he was going to get convicted, which is what happened. I asked Dave Harmon about his thoughts regarding the trial now that two decades have passed. What. I think has changed a lot of people's thinking and, and really made me think twice was uh, Jimmy Fennell's arrest, I think, I don't know, 10 years later, for kidnapping and sexually assaulting a woman in his custody. I think people are questioning the verdict and the punishment with, with pretty good reason um, because what we know now about Jimmy Fennell after his arrest and and him being sent to prison for violence against a woman uh and the fact that he his apartment wasn't searched at the time uh and 
questions that have surfaced later about the exact time that Stacy died. There have been conflicting expert opinions about the time of death, which have a, a big impact on who might have done it. Uh, and also witnesses who have, have come forward uh, recently who really call into question um, whether or not you know, Jimmy was the, the culprit. One of Rodney Reed's defense attorneys in that 1998 trial was Lydia Clay Jackson. She contends that she could have been more successful at demonstrating to the jury that indeed Reed and Stites were having a secret affair, but that some of the witnesses chose not to testify, she says, out of fear. Although a bartender from Bastrop did testify on the witness stand that she had seen Reed and Stites together from time to time. Rodney gave us a number of names of people who he thought would be able to testify concerning the relationship between he and Stacy. My co-counsel, Calvin Garvey, and I spoke with everyone who was willing to speak with us about that, but no one was willing to go that extra mile and say they would talk, they would give testimony. And, and I think it was because of the times there in the county. At the time of the trial, there was some question about whether the defense could prove that there was an affair between Stacy Stites and Rodney Reed. And I know that that did not necessarily come out clearly in the trial. That is true. It didn't come out clearly. The person that we had, and I, the lady was so heroic, testified that, yes, she had seen the two together. So we, she was willing to come and testify. She called us about two days after our conversation with her at her home, or maybe it was two days before she was supposed to testify, saying that she was told that terrible things would happen to her should she testify. She was still willing to come and testify after I said to her, if anything happens to you legally, then I will come back to this county and I will represent you for free. Who do you suppose threatened her? Someone who had the power to have her arrested. I hesitate to say who, in fact, it was because I don't have that information and I don't want to speculate about that. But, in fact, the, the threat did come about. Looking back in time to that trial, what, what thoughts come to mind now, now that we have the, uh, the space of time? Well, an answer to why... Judge Towsley was so adamant in wanting us to go to trial in eight weeks from the time both of us were appointed to represent Rodney. He would not give us an, uh, a, a continuance, and he continued to say he'll give us more investigators. Well, good trial lawyers investigate what the investigators in, uh, have found, the evidence of the investigators. And just because we had more... more um, investigators did not necessarily equate to having the time to really look at what the investigator was finding. I would hope that Rodney would be granted, if, if not exonerated from this, that he would be granted a new trial and that all the, the individuals who have now come forward would be willing to continue to come forward and testify on his, on his behalf. But we've had, you know, our highest criminal court in Texas has said that as long as it's a fair trial, you know, whether the person is not guilty or guilty, innocent, is no, has no consequence. It's a strange way of looking at the law, but that's the way the law is at times. Defense attorney Lydia Clay Jackson did point out that there were holes in the police investigation after Stites' murder. Among them, police processed Jimmy Fidel's pickup truck, the one Stacy Stites was to have driven to work the day her body was found, but they gave the truck back to Fennell, and he sold it shortly after. Also, investigators did not process the apartment where Fennell and Stacy lived. About that, Clay Jackson said, and I quote, this was a complete violation of due process. Lisa Tanner with the Texas Attorney General's Office and who served as the lead prosecutor on the team that persuaded the jury to convict Rodney Reed was asked about the fact that investigators never examined Stites and Fennell's apartment after the crime occurred. Unquestionably, um, that, was, that was bad. Um, but I have 
spent more hours in my life in the last 22 years trying to figure out how Rodney Reed could have not killed Stacy Stites. I've tried to figure out how Jimmy Fennell could have killed Stacy Stites. I can't get there. Um, but I have always, and, and I remain open to the possibility, but I, I know all of the evidence. I know how things fit together, and, and frankly, I, I, I can't get there. Rodney Reed has been on Texas death row for almost 22 years. To the prosecutors and to Stacy Stites' immediate family, Reed is guilty, and appellate courts have consistently upheld the guilty verdict. But over time, there has been growing doubt about whether he was her killer. New witnesses have stepped forward to support Reed's claim that he and Stacy were lovers and that Stites' fiance, Jimmy Fennell, found out about the affair and killed her. Next time on Texas Crime Files. There's no way that what the state told the jury happened is even possible. In our next episode, Reed's defenders share their concerns that the wrong man may be executed. Special thanks to our crew, reporter Chris Betts, producer Sarah Bryant, chief photographer Brian Bell, and to ABC News. Texas Crime Files is available on the KVUE YouTube page and wherever you download your podcasts. This podcast is produced by KVUE-TV, known as KVU in Texas, a Tegna-owned station. I'm your host, Bob Buckaloo, for Texas Crime Files.